Welcome to Wet Paint oh, on the Couch. Yeah. Business out with Scuba Steve. How oh, we get tired? <laughs> so this segment, um, we're just going to be sitting on my couch, of course, uh, talking about stuff um, that's going on in the world. Maybe do a few react videos. Man, my back is killing me. Uh, this is my merch, 59 Co. You can get it on the link in my on my profile and the link below. Here's the shirt that I'm wearing now. The first thing that I want to talk about today is uh, karma. Everybody thinks that karma is, if I help this person, I'm going to get help back and then my life's going to be better. Well, I was told by a friend the other day that that's not how that works. If you do something for somebody and you expect it to come back to you, then it will. Uh, it doesn't work that way. And you know what I mean? And I think that's bullshit because you're doing it as a good person. So, of course, us as people... We're expecting that to come back full, full fledged, full, full blown, boom. I helped you out with a dollar at the cash register. My someone's gonna pay my mortgage today. Whoo! You know what I mean? Um, I helped the old lady across the street. I'm gonna get my dick sucked, maybe. That's my philosophy on karma. Might not be your philosophy on karma, but you know. You'd think the 100th uh, old lady you help across the street, your wife would probably catch on and give you that good karma. So, so, so carrying on to the karma, I've helped out quite a bit of people. You know, guys at work, um, you know, um, people at the Dollar General, people, you know, if they're in trouble or in need, you know, help them out. And mostly financially. You know, I'm not financially stable. Uh, but if somebody needs help, I think that I would, I would rather help them. My hand's going like this a lot. I would rather help them. Uh, because clearly, you know, I always put people first. Well, I was at the Dollar General the other day, and this guy came up to me while I was packing some smokes, and he asked me for $10. Well, I... I knew that he was going to ask me for money because of the way that he came to my vehicle. Um, he saw he he came up to the, the window and he started to uh, my phone's going off. Sorry, he started to tell me like, "Hey man, hey look man, look I need gas and blah blah blah." And of course I didn't believe him. But my thing is, if you come to me and you need help, just be honest. Like, dude, look, I need to go get some beer. I need some money. Do you mind buying me a beer? Clearly, the guy's like 45 years old. He can he can get beer, but he just don't have the money. I don't care. I will give you that. He came up. He seen where I work. He starts naming a bunch of people off. Like, that was going to seal the deal. Like, hey, man, look, I know this guy, so... It, uh, so, we, we kind of... We're kind of friends because we know the same people. But, I let it slide. He asked for gas money, and... Uh, at first, he wanted to take, he went to ride with me to get gas, and I said, no, because if you don't have gas, why would you burn the gas that you have to go get more gas? And ten dollars ain't gonna do nothing. Well, like I said, I just got out of the Dollar General. I was like, hey, well, why don't you go get cash back? First of all, dude, you're asking me for way too much. I'm not. I, I'm about to go the fuck home. I just got off work. Where did you just get off from? The bar? Like, so this dude was already rubbing me wrong, but I knew that good karma. I wanted that good karma. So I got out of my truck. He asked me for a cigarette, so I gave him a cigarette. Got out of my truck, closed the door, locked it. Of course, you got to have it locked. Because, you know, some, even though we know the same people, my the people that I know know bad people too. So I go in there, I buy a piece of gum. I tell the lady, hey, look, I'm getting $10 cash back. It was $11 for that pack of gum, and I gave it to the guy. Well, it kind of struck me wrong because it, I started to remember things. Uh, when I originally went in there, there was an older man with his daughter. And when they came out of the Dollar General, 
they asked me, or they said something, and I thought he was talking to me. Uh, hey, man, quit that drinking. And I was like, what the fuck? And in my head, I said, I thought that this guy was trying to be my fucking therapist or something. And But I just I let it slide, and I kept on going. And <laughs> I don't know what the hell I was buying. I think I just went in there for cigarettes. But the, and then it came out, and I was like, man, that guy's talking about the guy because he probably asked him for money too. And as I was driving away, I seen another couple pull up, or a couple pull up, and he got out of the car and asked them the same thing. So clearly this guy was just trying to get some money, maybe for dope or something. I don't know. It's just like, you got ten dollars. You could buy some hurricanes for ten dollars. And you know, um, one more thing before I continue, the the couch segment is just a hangout, like talk bullshit. I wouldn't even call it a podcast uh, because it's on YouTube and it's not going to be on anywhere else. But it's where we drink and smoke and talk, like we're vibing right now, me and you. So. If you don't like people smoking, you don't like people drinking, th- this probably isn't the channel for you. Oh yeah, going back to this strange guy. I remember we we had an uh, we had an inventory in Lynchburg, and the people at the warehouse that worked there had already done pretty much everything. So we drove six and a half hours for no fucking reason, and we went out to dinner. Um. Because we, you know, there was a restaurant there that uh, the guy that was our manager at the time wanted to go to. So, um, we end up drinking there, you know, hanging out, talking, telling stories and stuff. Uh, we get back to the hotel. And, you know, all my other buddies, you know, they were, they were like sleeping and stuff. So, no one wanted to hang out after the bar. And I wanted to keep on going. Um, so... The, I, I so I I got a ride there. Like I said, we drove together for six hours. I needed cigarettes and I wanted to get another beer, and we were at this hotel. So I went downstairs and stuff, and I and you know I don't even think Uber was a thing, and I'm sure that there was tons of Ubers there. Um, but this is why I don't trust people. Or, cause I've seen some some weird stuff. Oh yeah, so I went downstairs to the the main lobby, and there was this guy run who was uh, up front running the the computer and, and assigning people rooms and stuff. Well, he was a heavier guy, and he was definitely gay, and I'm pretty sure that he thought that I was pretty attractive, which I am. Uh, so I was like, man, I'm gonna take. Uh, advantage of this um so i went downstairs and i taught this guy and he was of course like i said gay and i said hey man look um how far is the um gas station from here because i want to go back get back smokes and he said it's not that far but you know it's a pretty rough neighborhood so you might want to be careful. I said, hey, I said, man, I said, what time do you get off? I was like, do you think that you, maybe you could give me a ride to the gas station? And he said, sure, you know, no problem. But he didn't say it plain. He's like, sure, no problem. Which, you you know, enthusiasm is a great thing. So uh, I go back up to my room and stuff, and he's like, I think it was like fucking like 9, 10 o'clock at night. And so I go back up there, and I wait and wait and wait. And then I go downstairs when he gets off. Dude's like, okay, cool. Let me go ahead and clock out. Let me get my stuff. Um, so we're walking out the hotel. And I said, hey, man, I said, where, where, where are you parked at? He said, I'm parked in the back. And I'm thinking, I mean, the guy was clean cut, you know what I mean? So I thought maybe he had a good car. So we kept passing these cars that were nice and stuff. And I'm like, okay. This isn't the back. This is the back. So we go around the hotel, and this isn't the back. This isn't the back. So we go across the street to uh, a lot that I guess the employees park at. The guy was driving a minivan that was not nice, 
and the back window had been shattered out, and he had duct taped the back window so the rain wouldn't get in. Any normal human being would understand that this is probably not the best idea. Someone said to me in the back of my head, Timothy, don't get in this van. Good karma. This guy was, was, was implementing his good karma to somebody by giving them a ride to the store. A complete stranger. I could have been a murderer. He could have been a murderer. He wanted the dick is what he wanted. But, uh, so I said, fuck it. I'm going to get in this van because I need a pack of cigarettes and a beer. Um, so we get in the van and he's like, excuse the mess. I'm like, what is he talking about? You know, it didn't look too messy. It was just regular wear and tear stuff on the, and I, I turn around I guess I was curious on how the fuck he was supposed to back out of this parking spot because there was duct tape on the back window. So I turn around. The guy doesn't have a back seat. There's no back seat in the van. Not weird. It's weird when you get a chair that is not like a Regular chair, like a kitchen chair or a stool or anything like that. Not even a lazy boy recliner. But a chair that when you sit in it, you sit like this. And it's comfortable. I hadn't sat in it, don't get me wrong. Don't don't put that juju on me. But the fact that the chair was there was a huge problem. Did I get out of the van? No. Because I wanted a pack of cigarettes and a beer. So we're driving to the gas station. As soon as we get to the gas station, I understand why this guy cared about me so much. I went and got my beer, went to the register to get my cigarettes, and this lady runs into the store and starts beating the shit out of this guy who was in front of me. So I back up. I'm like, what the fuck is going on, dude? She beats the shit out of him. They leave, run, they both run out of the store, and everyone in the store acted like everything was okay. That is a fucking problem. Oh. I get my cigarettes, I got my beer, I get back into the rape van. The guy does, uh, okay, the guy, I forgot to mention this, when we got back into the van... I remember, it was only right, it was like probably two or three blocks away from the hotel. I could have walked, but I'm glad I didn't. I'm glad I got into that stranger's van with no window. Or probably child locked doors. I remember how to get there from the hotel to the store. I could see the hotel. The fucking guy goes a totally different fucking way so every turn that he takes that i know is not the turn to get back to the hotel um scares me even more and he's asking me questions like where am i from what do i do why am i at the hotel and it's like dude this four or five minute ride back to the hotel you turned into 20 minutes i said i would just like to go to my room i have a beer I'm married, I'm not gay, I want to drink, and I want to smoke a fucking cigarette. So we finally get back to the hotel, I open the door, and I get into my room, and I just say thank you so much for not killing me. Just thanking God and whatnot. Uh, yeah, and things, man. That was, a, that was a rough night, and those were only things that... Uh, Tim, uh, Tim's stories have on them, but it all stem like stuff like that. Good karma, man. It it really makes me think of things that um, makes me think of things that I've done for other people, and that was that was somebody doing something good for me. That guy at the Dollar General, I don't know what his problem was, but he needed help. And but you're not going to tell somebody they need help. That's rude. 
Sorry if you guys hear a fan because it is fucking hot in the studio over here. And the fan is blowing into this room. One more thing I wanted to talk about. Um, about it that, that kind of sticks into the karma thing. Uh, when you do something for somebody, this wasn't really something that we did for somebody. This was something that, um, I did a service to, and and the guy paid for it, you know what I mean? But, uh, it's a, it's a story from when I was younger and me and my buddy John were doing, um, music videos for people around the neighborhood. I don't even know how we got started. I think I, everybody knew we had MacBooks and I had a camera that I used to carry around with me everywhere. And, um, you know, I think maybe, like, it was, they kind of put two and two together. We grew up in a little bit of a rough neighborhood. But this guy, I don't even think I want to say his name because he was so fucking, he's, like, kind of scary. This big black dude, man, he ran the neighborhood over there. And he wanted to make this music video. And I remember, this was when I was doing a lot of editing on my MacBook, so I was just, like, uh, learning iMovie, like, pretty heavily. And, like, I had some videos on YouTube that I've completely lost that I don't even have anymore. Um, but it was just, it, it, I have the footage of it, and I, I could take that footage and edit it, but, you know, trying to get this done. Um, but, back to the story, this guy, like, begged me and my buddy John to do a music video for him and we did we shot like different places and stuff and and he went it was called fuck the police and it was um you know fuck the DEA I think it was fuck the DEA FBI IRS some crazy shit like that right I mean it was sketchy and then there I remember there being a line like look out for the cookout and he and you know you would think that we would have a, a scene in there where it's like hey look out for the cookout and he's flipping things maybe I'm just thinking of it now because I'm older but at that time I was like I think 17 16 17 um but uh so me and my buddy John we were we were going around all these places you know and uh it took us like a month to it took us a day it took us two days to, uh, it took us two days to record it but then it took us a month to edit it and john is not my sound guy so <laughs> it took us months to edit it or a month to edit it and you know trying to put all the pieces together and then he was ca- i would i would do stuff edit it then i'd send it to him he were he would tell me hey look man this needs to happen this needs to happen so i'd send it back he changed it send it back change it send it back change it send it back change it and i know that i'm still learning but i i think that the a lot of the ideas were great um you know i guess he didn't think of it but i mean it was his baby that was his project and i understood that he wanted it done a certain way because i would have been the same way um but so we, we finally come to a conclusion. You know, I sent him the final copy. He's like, man, this is fucking great. This is awesome. You know, you did a, such a good job. And uh, and I was like, man, let's get this on YouTube. So we uploaded it on YouTube. We shared it. I think this, this I don't know. This might have been Facebook or MySpace. I, I think it was more so Facebook because we're a little older. We get up there. It gets the views. He calls me because there's a scene where he's walking through two cop cars, and he's fucking he's flicking them off and this and that. And we got a lot of good footage of the police because we live in we lived in Norfolk, Virginia, and uh, so right down the road is the the precinct. So it was pretty heavy. Like you know, you see cops all the time. And we we get we get good shots of like him walking through cop cars and people getting arrested and like the lights and stuff like that. You know, it was a real good. It, that I got some real good footage, and I edited it pretty well. He calls me out of the blue one day. I remember it was real scary because he ca- it was the same time he paid me. He calls me. He pulls up to the house that we were staying at. 
And he gives me the money. It was like fucking 150 bucks, which was a lot to me at that point. And he comes to me, he's like, hey, man, look, I appreciate you, you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm going to pay you, I, uh, you know, you did good, we did good, uh, but you got to take the video down. I was like, what the fuck? He's like, yeah, man, it's, it's just too hot right now for it. So he was afraid that what he was saying, I don't know if he had like a court case or something going on, but he was afraid that it was going to affect him and his court case because he's saying, fuck the DEA, fuck the FBI, Fuck the IRS, fuck the police, and everything. And I guess he's smart about it. But I respected him for that, and I took down a video that took me months to make, and months, I wouldn't say waste it, because I learned a lot from it, but we worked so hard on it, and we couldn't show it to anybody. Um, yeah. I don't know how that what that has to do with karma, but I just wanted to kind of tell that story because it was it was like kind of like a turning point. Like me and John, you know, it was like, hey man, look, if we do this for everybody, if we did it for them, then he's gonna pass it on to them and them and them and them because there was a group out there called the Riders that I think is still a group out there um, that everybody was into music, so there was a ton of opportunity there to shoot videos and music videos and stuff. And I think maybe they had all of they like they had a case against all of them or something. I don't know. I don't know the whole story. I should figure that out. And then before I talk about it, because if this blows up, I'll probably end up getting murdered. So if I get murdered, the uh, riders did it. I'm just fucking. I'm just kidding. Because there's like a whole new group of them. But the older guys, I guess the OGs, I know a lot of. We went to school together. Uh, but yeah. I think that's uh I think this all is gonna be for this segment of the video. I have to edit this. Um, if you guys want to get this shirt, like I said, the links in the bottom. Um, uh, buy it, support my channel, all that stuff. I think uh, I think this is gonna be the set. I did a few videos uh, that kind of like things were a little awkward in the beginning, but I think uh, I got a better understanding of what I need to do. Which is just be myself and stop trying to be like other people. But yeah, uh, my wife's going to get mad at me because I've been smoking in the house. And I've also had a few beers. So, thanks. Bye. Yeah, yeah. School, 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 yeah, school. Cinematics. Yeah, nigga. Stress, nigga.